the Democratic Party chair in Cuyahoga County, uh, Chantel Brown, claimed victory last night in Ohio's 11th district Democratic primary to fill that state's congressional seat vacated by Housing and Urban Development Secretary Marsha Fudge. Brown defeated former Ohio State Senator and former co-chair of the Bernie Sanders 2020 presidential campaign, Nina Turner. Many thought Turner would become the next black progressive to join Congress. Her ability to secure early endorsements from people like Sanders and AOC, her campaign's substantial financial edge over other candidates, and early polling projections that showed her well-positioned all made her an early favorite to win the contest. But Turner's history is an unapologetic critic of President Biden, Hillary Clinton, and other Democrats was used by her detractors to wage a proxy war between the Democratic establishment and progressives. Conversely, Chantel Brown publicly dubbed her says, as herself an ally of Joe Biden, who won the 19th district of, of Ohio during the 2020 campaign. The distance between Turner and the Democratic Party led to es establishment Democrats like Hillary Clinton and Jim Clyburn and the leadership of the Congressional Black Caucus endorsing Brown's campaign. During her concession speech, Turner vowed to never let what happened to her campaign happen to other progressives. Chantel Brown's defeat of Nina Turner has led political analysts to question whether the true victory was among the establishment Democrats over progressive Democrats. Also, if there is genuinely a concerted effort against black progressive Democrats or if the opposition to Nina Turner was her own doing. Joining us to discuss the race and the future of black progressives is president of People for the American Way, Ben Jealous. So Ben, give me your take on this, the, the results of this race. Was this the establishment against the progressives, that proxy war that we thought we were seeing um, play out? And did the establishment win or was this something else happening here? You know, look, I think it's gonna take a minute to really understand exactly what happened. Nina lost by about 4,000 votes. Um, this was a low turnout election. Honestly, in the low turnout election, you got to know um, where every one of your votes is and move them to the polls. It could simply just be that, um, you know, Ms. Brown knew where her 30,000 or so uh, voters were and moved them to the polls. And, you know, Nina came up short in moving hers to the polls. Now, what also happened undeniably was that an on a unprecedented amount of dark money, corporate dark money went into this race. And what's important there is that they couldn't win by telling the truth about Nina. They literally said, they sent out mailers saying that Nina Turner was against Medicare for all. Nina Turner, co-chair of Bernie Sanders campaign, was against Medicare for all. That's a win of sorts. You know, for us as progressives, it's all the prize is the progress, not the position. Nina won the argument on the issues. The only way to defeat her was to actually send out uh, hundreds of thousands of pieces of lit lying uh, that and and accusing her of holding uh, a position that was contrary to her actual position. They could, in other words, they could not say that it was a problem that Nina was for Medicare for all. They could not bring an argument against Medicare for all. So they just simply lied and said she was against it uh, and prayed that people didn't do their research to find out that that was just a bold faced lie. So good news I would say is that Nina won the argument on the issues. Bad news is that she fell 4,000 votes short. Uh, she is a force, um, she's not going anywhere. Uh, and progressives continue to have the ideas. The establishment right. really lacks ideas for actually making sure we solve the problems of working people. So, so I, could, oh, I could understand Hillary Clinton making an endorsement. I could understand Jim Clyburn endorsing someone. I couldn't quite understand the Congressional Black Caucus endorsing someone, both of whom were black candidates, uh, uh, in this race. Uh, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't remember a precedent for it. Is this, was it as strange as we thought it was, or was this something that they normally do? Um, it is unusual that they have increasingly got involved in so-called successor races. 
Um, but it's not the, the caucus, I want to be clear, it's the CBC PAC. And the CBC PAC okay. uh, is a dark money vehicle uh, that oftentimes is a conduit for a lot of corporate dollars. Uh, it is not the CB, the venerated Congressional Black Caucus. It is a parallel organization. It's a dark money so, organization. So is, there no, is there no relationship to the, to the Congressional Black Caucus? No, no, the there's CBC a relationship. Pack? It's associated, but it's not the CBC that endorses. It's the CBC PAC. The CBC PAC has different leadership from the CBC. The person who's the head of the CBC is not the head of the CBC PAC. Um, and the CBC PAC really does rely on corporate money and is a vehicle for injecting corporate money into races. Oftentimes, that's into general it, it election. Sounds, it, sounds like there, it sounds like there's a line there that, that most people watching this won't recognize as yeah, a real not, line. I don't, I don't under, I, I, I'm having a hard time. I follow policy. I'm having a hard time figuring out, like, so wait, they're completely independent of each other? If with the CBC PAC, endorse someone that the CBC was adamantly opposed to them endorsing? Well, the CBC PAC endorsing doesn't mean that the CBC endorsed. The CBC doesn't endorse candidates. CBC members endorse candidates hmm. and the CBC PAC endorses. And the CBC PAC, my understanding, is a separate organization, associated but separate organization. Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> I, need, I need to get a pack so I can just do things in the pack and it won't be me, but it'll be the pack. Yeah, things. well, you, yeah, uh, no, so, I mean, that's, you know, um, Stephen, Stephen Colbert did a great piece about, you know, about how these dark many packs work um, a long time ago. But yes, uh, it is meant to confound and conflate and confuse and it's fueled by so, corporate dark money. So you've mentioned several times that, you know, this was dark money working against Nina Turner. Who? What, what are the, you, even if you don't know the names of the people, what, what interests are invested in Nina Turner not being elected and Chantel Brown being elected? Folks who don't want Medicare for all, folks who don't want to cancel student debt, folks who don't want to raise the minimum wage to $15, like actually do it. You know, that's the real problem here. Um, when Dr. King was assassinated. 48% of the black community was in poverty. When Barack Obama was elected, about 48% of the black community was in poverty. Nina Turner started off her career selling shoes at Payless. And you know, the women were in poverty, trying to find nice shoes for church or for work. Uh, typically, it was kind of the core group. Then she worked for the school board. Then she worked for the mayor. Then she was a state. Then she was on the on the city council. Then she was a state senator. Then she was a voice that cut through the media, advocating for the class of folks that she comes from and that she taught as a community college professor. And her only crime is that she was too enthusiastic about ending poverty in the black community, and that's a problem. That's a problem. And when so, black leaders are taking so money from see, corporations to attack black leaders who are have the urgency that's appropriate for ending lingering poverty in our community and our country, that's a real problem. So do you see this as just a one off or do you think that, you know, uh, you know, progressive won some impressive. I mean, I went through in my governor's race. I won my primary but I ran into, you know, an establishment in the in the general who was very uncomfortable right. but, with but me simply I saying. I'm, I guess what I'm asking, though, I'm, what I'm asking, though, is that this political environment is slightly different from the 2020 political environment where people were trying to get rid of Trump. Or and, and, the whole yeah. thing. and also also COVID is raging again. Uh, there's violence in our cities that just wasn't there in the same way uh, during, uh, at, at the beginning of the, uh, the last election. Do you think that kind of conditions on the ground are somehow working against the progressive message and people are now just feeling more comfortable with establishment candidates or that this is just a one-off thing that, that progressives will get past and we'll have progressive candidates who will win uh, just as much as they won in the last election? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, look, each race is different. What I would say is that money matters. What, what was unique about this race that had never happened before 
that anybody can recall in Ohio's 11th district was $3 million in corporate dark money, came in late and trashed the leading candidate relentlessly. That was completely unique. Democrats going to corporations, going to wealthy Republicans, getting money to attack Democrats in primary while hiding their hands because it's dark money so you don't have to say who did it just drives the whole point. I just want to make sure, I just want to, I want to underscore something you just said. You said that Democrats went to Republicans to get the money to trash Nina Turner. That's what you believe about this? Yeah, well, brother, all you got to do is go through Chantel Brown's finance records and look for people who supported Donald Trump, like Robert Kraft, who gave her $20,000. Like, it's there in black and white. It's not about what I believe. It's about what the finance report will tell you. And then, you, and then, you know, when you consider who are our corporate leaders, I mean, I guess you could believe that every corporate leader is a Democrat. I, you know, I, I, come on. <laughs> you know? So, right. so the combination of you got prominent Republicans who have written checks to Donald Trump, writing checks to Chantel Brown, and then you got these PACs that, that historically have taken large money from corporations lying and, and the, oh, the best they can do is send out a mailer saying Nina Turner opposes Medicare for all, which couldn't be a bigger lie, specifically because they oppose Medicare for all, but they can't make an argument against it to convince the people. The best they can do is confuse. Ben Jealous, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure, sir.